as well as our competition in the kitchen, I'm travelling the country looking at the science behind some of the most intense and intriguing flavours. I'm going to start with one of the most powerful flavours I've ever tasted. I remember when sushi used to be one of the most exotic foods around. I was in my 20s before I even tasted it, but now it's in every supermarket. And when you open a box, one of the key ingredients is not immediately obvious. You have to search around for it. And it's this, wasabi. It's really strange stuff. Unusual flavors, quite strong. Woo! Got up my nose into just that bit of my head, and now it's gone again. I, I thought I loved that when I first came across it. But what if I was to tell you that this is a fake? That there is virtually no wasabi in this packet. This is horseradish, mustard, green food coloring. And typically, a, a sachet of this stuff contains 1% real wasabi. The vast majority of wasabi sold in this country is effectively fake. But why, when supermarkets could presumably have the real thing? And does it matter anyway? Does the real wasabi taste any different to the one in my lunch? Hi, Nick. Hi, Mark. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm fine. I'm in search of the real wasabi flavour. So I'm on my way to the UK's only wasabi farm. Because the secret to the flavour of wasabi is the wasabi plant itself. So a slightly secret location. Uh -huh. Nick Russell has been growing wasabi since 2010. Oh, that is a lot of water. Yeah. What, is this a stream or something? Or... Uh, effectively, yeah, it's, it bubbles straight out of the ground. So these are the plants? Yeah, so these ones are still relatively young. Uh, they've been in here for about a year or so. Wasabi is normally grown in the high mountains of Japan, along streams that are rich in minerals and oxygen, conditions that are almost impossible to replicate in gloomy old England. Yeah, it. here it is. But Nick has achieved it, and the results are spectacular. He has tens of thousands of plants growing here in these enclosures. And this one is ready to harvest. So how old are these plants? So these ones are around about two years old. Huh. Um, they're about ready for harvest. So where, where's the wasabi? Where's this magical stuff? The part we're looking for, the jewel in the crown, so to speak, is the rhizome, which is effectively a, a, an elongated stem of the plant. We'll give them just a little bit of a wiggle. There he comes. Yeah. Wow. And we'll get loads of little offshoots, but that's the real... Uh... These are the roots and that's the rhizome? Yeah. And that's where the wasabi is? Exactly, yeah. Wow. Let's clean them up and take yeah. a look. Sure. can really start to see that familiar wasabi green coming out. Yeah, definitely. And, and as we grate it, that, that colour will really start to come through. Because it requires almost atomic levels of precision in controlling the growing environment, wasabi is one of the most expensive plants in the world. I'd guess that that one's around about, um, probably about 100 grams. 100 grams, yeah. okay. And how much could you sell that for? 250 pounds a kilo. Whoa, wow. OK. Is that about 25 quid then? Pretty much, yeah. Huh. Yeah, at, at a guess, yeah. Wow. Go on. That's not bad harvest, is it? And especially if you look around <laughs> how many of these there are. That's why this isn't a secret location. Yeah, yeah. We, we do try to keep it under wraps a little bit. The key to experiencing the real wasabi flavour is its freshness. So what we're going to do here is, is grate some of this up. It's all in the grating. The simple act of grating breaks down the cell walls, releasing an enzyme which creates intense flavours and oils called isothiocyanates. It is these oils that pack the wallop. There we go. And it's a lot more of a natural green and you will start to smell it quite strongly yeah. as well. Yeah. So there we go. Is that going to blow my head off? We'll find out shortly. Okay. 
Yeah, a little bit of blowing. Yep. Ooh, that's so strong. Mm. That is, that really clears your nose. Mm. <laughs> and your taste buds, whoa. Yeah, it really, wow. does, really does get you right up in the, in the yeah, sinuses, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing that um, a simple grated plant can do that. Oh yeah, right up your nose, isn't it? Mm. Woof. That's a, but a fireball. Quite a solid, sweet aftertaste with it. Yeah, you're right, yeah. yeah. Mm, and now it's, now it's dying down. Yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah, and, and it is sweet. Yeah. I'm getting a bit of that stuff you get with a bit of whiskey in your stomach now. Yeah, warming. Yeah. yeah it's good for yeah. the weather. <laughs> I've never tasted that, that effect from wasabi before. While I'm remembering all this, I want to just compare it with shop-bought. Okay, so much more vivid green colour. Yeah, so a lot of colouring in that. A different okay. consistency. Oh yeah, I'm sort of mm. Mm. creamy. That's what I recognise as wasabi. That's a totally different flavour. Completely really different, yeah. <laughs> None yeah. of that vegetably raw grassiness mm. at all. It's much more processed, much mm. more. The whole chemical process we're putting together here, you can't recreate in a packet. But here's the rub. It turns out that wasabi's unique flavour comes from chemicals that are highly volatile, meaning they quickly turn to vapour and vanish. Within just a few minutes the wasabi hit has dwindled away to virtually nothing. 20 minutes have gone by, that wasabi should be a totally different beast now, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. let's try it. Mild, mm. yeah, no blow up the nose. Slight touch of sweetness. Sweet, yeah. If you were to sort of mow the grass early spring, this is how it might, you think it might taste. That's really it. Um, but yeah, but it's lost all its power. Mm. That whole chemical reaction we were chatting about has just dropped away completely. It's just the aftermath, effectively. So you've got to make it fresh in order to get the real wasabi. How do you do this in a Japanese restaurant? I think predominantly it's grated at the table. Okay. Um, so you do have that, that reaction right with you there as you're dining. Mm. And I guess that's why, that's why the kind of shop wasabi hasn't got the stuff in it. So, as well as being incredibly tricky to grow, it also needs to be super fresh. And that's why, even if money was no object, the shop-bought wasabi has to be imitation. The vast majority of wasabi plants grown here are destined for the very best restaurants in the UK and abroad. In some cases, selling for up to five pounds for a teaspoonful. That puts it beyond the pocket of most of us. Now that I've tried the real deal, the idea of eating my sushi with a synthetic wasabi doesn't seem so appealing. On the other hand, I am an academic, so it's gonna have to be a rare treat.